I'm going to show you how easy it is to create inventory cycle counts in Dynamics GP. Let's take a look at it. The first thing you'll want to do is create a cycle count schedule. I'm going to create one based on the next count date. Enter that here. I could easily add the items to my schedule here, but the best way to do that is to use the mass add function. I'll open that window up. And you can see there's a number of ways to create the range that you want to mass add the items for, from. I'm going to use the next count date, and I'm going to add every item that is to be counted in month of April. I'm going to add my criterion here and hit add. I'm just going to go out and look at my inventory master file and create and add all the items that have a next count date within April. You can see those items listed here. Now I'm going to save that because what I want to do is pick a smaller count to actually do the entry for. So I'm going to pick this one here. I entered it previously. It's got three items on it. And to activate the count, you want to hit the Start Count button right here. And when you do that, it's going to print out the start, stock count list. Let's take a quick look at the standard report. Here they are. But more importantly, it's going to take a snapshot of your existing inventory quantities. It's going to use that snapshot to compare the actual counts against. Now the value of this is that you can continue to use GP to process transactions. And as long as you're aware of the physical movement of those goods, your actual stock count won't be impaired. So I started that count. Now let's take a look at the stock count entry screen. I'm going to pull up that activated account. Here it is. Let me open the grid. I've got the three items here, and now all I do is merely enter my count. And you can see as I enter the count, it's going to calculate the variance for me. Again, the variance based on, on the actual count and the snapshot. Let's go down here. I have a little shortage. Now, in order to analyze your variance, there's two little buttons down at the bottom that can give you a lot of help. Let's look at transaction history. This is going to show all inventory transactions that were posted recently. Also, there's the unposted transactions. They'll show you the transactions that are in the system that have not yet been posted. So this will help you identify variances that may be caused by a timing difference in your stock count. And finally, let me just enter the final quantity here. Once I'm done entering the results of the count, I'm going to process that count and what it's going to do is it's going to create the transaction variances and then post them to inventory. So let me click on that and hit process. And this shows me that a stock batch was created. And that's all you really need to do. So you can see that creating cycle counts in Dynamics GP is really quite easy. It's something you should do on a regular basis to make sure that your inventory quantities are up to date and accurate.